Hello everybody, my name is Taborna Eyes Barry from Barry Science Lab, and today we're going to be doing another video about uh, the oscillation of a spring, because after last time I explained the oscillation of a spring, a lot of people emailed me asking, can you clarify it further? Can you show how the oscillation of the spring transforms into a sinusoidal curve? So that's what I'm going to do today. So once we stretch this spring, this is an example of oscillation for anyone who hasn't watched the last video. Really carefully. All right, so as you can see, it goes back and forth between slight oscillation of, between slight elongation and slight compression. So let's say this is the compressed state. This is the equilibrium. And this is the stretched state. So now, let's just draw a line here where our, our spring will start from. And here, and we're going to make this a little bit long because we're going to show three cycles of its oscillation. So, uh, we're just going to put some different times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so for one, we're going to start like this. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Okay. And here is our box. And you might say, why are you starting at the stretch state? Clearly it starts at the equilibrium state. Well, to get it moving, you first have to elongate it. You can also compress it, but uh, it can't really compress at this state because there's not enough weight on it. So, stretching is the main way to go here. And the thing is, uh, if this is equilibrium, we're going to consider this line, x or delta x, the displacement of this ring is equal to zero. That means that it's stretched, the displacement delta x is going to be negative because it's below the line, and for compressed, delta x is going to be positive since it's above the line. Okay, so let's just erase this for a second because it's getting in the way, and write delta x is zero instead here. Okay, so let's call this state, for example, let's just say it's state A, the equilibrium state is state B, and the compressed state is state C. Okay, so what can we do here? Well, for scenario number two, it's going to pass through the equilibrium a line, even though it's not actually going to be at equilibrium. Like you see here, when we oscillate it, the equilibrium line is over there, and you can see it move back and forth between the equilibrium line a few times. So, uh, that means that at number two, we can draw this a little less compressed, it's going to be the most compressed. So, it's going to look something like this. And then the cycle repeats again. It goes back to equilibrium, which is going to look like this. Uh, let's just draw the box. Then it's going to get stretched back out for number five. For number six, it's going to go back to the equilibrium state once again. And for number seven, it's going to be compressed again. For number eight, it's going to be at equilibrium again. And number nine, it's going to be stretched out. And again, this is a spring with no damping. A real spring won't have the same amplitude. So well, now let's draw the points of the springs at different times so the spring is so the spring is, let's make this a little thicker. So the spring is over here, right here, 
over here, right next there, over here, right there, over here, over here, and we just are going to continue this until it's done. And now let's draw a curve through all these points. Uh, Oh, whoopsies. Okay, so that wasn't the most perfect curve, but it's all right because it represents uh, the spring's position over time. So now, how can we express this as a graph? The position of the spring, the velocity of the spring, the acceleration of spring, all over time. Well, we can do that by doing this we can draw a graph with this sinusoidal curve. And so you might notice it starts from the stretch state and we're just going to call this, I don't know, for example, maybe negative five. Maybe A is negative five in some random unit system. And let's call the stretch state also five. And this is just gonna be zero, obviously, by all standards. So now, since it starts from the stretch state, we're going to start from the bottom here. And let's switch thickness. So we're going to start from down here. And, oh, wait. So, the th so um, what we're going to do here, you could use the real oscillation times, but that would mess with the derivatives and stuff, which would make our VT functions not clean. So we're going to use for one full cycle, radians instead, specifically 2 pi. So we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now we're only going to draw one cycle here for the sake of time, but you can see that it's going to be repeating. So, uh, you know what, this is a waste of space. I need to make this spread out more pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Okay, so now let's draw some points for our graph, and they're just going to look regular. So over here, over here, just like how we drew them with the other graph. No, not there. Okay, so now let's draw the curve. And 2 pi should be right about here instead. So let's just erase that to make it a little more clean. Uh-huh. So that's about how it's going to look. So how can we express this as a sinusoidal function? Well, this specifically, you can express as minus five cosine t. So that's going to be our x of t. Now, using, oh, I see why that happened so wonkily. This should look a little bit like this. Okay, so this is going to be our x of t graph, and x of t is minus 5 cosine t. Now, to find v of t, we're going to take the derivative of that. So, what's the thickness of this? Perfect. So, the derivative of that is going to be 5 sine t. Where the negative go? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative negative becomes positive. Okay, five sine t is going to look like this. We start from here, we go up here, then we go down here. And if you don't understand what a derivative is, you can basically think of it like the slope of a graph at any point in space. Like for example, here the derivative is zero because the tangent line here has a slope of zero. Okay, so now, 
let's draw our graph. Feathering it a little bit here, but yep, yeah, that's it. That's our V of t. And now, to find A of t, we simply do that once again. A of t is equal to 5 cosine t, because the derivative of sine of t is cosine of t, but the derivative of cosine of t is minus sine of t. 5 cosine t is just going to be the flip of this graph, so it's going to look like this over here, this over here, this over here, this over here, and that over there. So now, let's just do this. Ah, oh, damn. That did not look good. Okay. Well, that's an approximation. There. Better. Okay. So, that's how the A of T graph is going to look like. So, we're going to have minus 5 cosine t, 5 sine t, uh, and 5 cosine t. So, that's how you can form a sinusoidal curve with a spring. So, that's it. Thank you everybody for watching. And it's the last day of Black History Month. So, remember to go to this website to commemorate the place that black scientists have taken in our community.